like a therapist or a rehab specialist? That, that whole group gets together. Oh, and, Alcoholics Anonymous? No. That they all get together and they tell what he's doing wrong and how they're trying to help. That is a... Like what? a commit? No. That all the people are there. It's oh, an intervention? intervention? See, it come, but it takes a while. That is so embarrassing for me when this happens. It's all right. I didn't even know it. So I says, now we play charades. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and they, <laughs> and so if I can't think of it, I says, they do this or that or whatever. Then right away they know what I'm... Well, I don't do it with strangers, you know. I just rather not talk <laughs> so they don't know that I'm having a little problem. But with the kids, they know. I said, we just have to play charades now. <laughs> so he, who, who, was, who took him to the intervention? He thought, Bab, when we were getting in the car, because I drove, I took my car, and he went with me. And he thought we were going shopping. I should have told him the truth, but I figured he probably wouldn't want to go. <laughs> and there was everybody, all my children. And ba ba Dwayne was there. Gregory was there. Everybody was there. I don't know. I think even your mother was there. I don't remember. But it was so bad. And I cried so hard that I could hardly talk. And I told him, if he's not going to get himself into rehab, you know, to get cleaned up, I, I'm not going home with him. And I didn't. I went and I stayed. Dwayne had a mobile home, you know, a trailer. And uh, so Dawn and I and Brian went there and Bradley stayed home. Somebody had to stay with him. And so I was gone for two weeks, but I came in when he was at work and I wrote a little note and I told him I picked up my clothes and all that. And I remember, I wish I would have saved it. It's probably here somewhere, but when I packed and I moved, I never unpacked, I don't know where it is, but he had underlined in red ink, no, no, no. And so when he quit drinking, it was like two months before he died. And I know he come home from work one time and he says, you're gonna kill me with this. And I probably killed him because, see, he was a stubborn man. He was a good man, but he was very stubborn. He was supposed to go and get himself so they can give him something to counteract whatever. And he wouldn't do that. And so in two months, he was dead. So I have a feeling I had a hand in his dying. You can't say it like that. No, seriously. I mean, I know that you can think like that, but that's not something that took place over a couple of months or a year. Mm -hmm. That was something that was going on for years for and years, years and, and years. years. And I tell you, he drank so much. One time I called your dad and I says, oh, you're home. Where's dad? And he says, well, I dropped him off home. Isn't he home? I said, well, I looked. I says, I looked in a garage. I looked in the basement, looked upstairs. He's not here. So I happened to go in the back, and he's laying on the ground by that, <laughs> by the, you know where the door wall was. Yeah. And on the grass there by that cement. And I says, Bad, get up so neighbors don't see you. He says, time to go to work. He just got home. <laughs> and, and one time before that, the kids' na neighbors, probably close by your mother's there where they lived on Millar, and they said, uh, Mr. Hine is dead. He's laying. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped dead. He you know, was laying by the garden. No, he drank a lot. He drank a lot. He drank at work. Yeah. So, no, it was, it was not easy for me. And especially, you know. I know, when, Grandma. No, you have no idea. You have, <laughs> well, I know. I technically don't know, but. I, <laughs> it was so hard. I remember one time I had a bad cold, and I never drink. I never, you know that. I never touch that stuff. And I took, he always had Southern <laughs> Comfort at home, so I was sitting on the couch in the living room, and I 
I mean a PAMI rule. And I put it over here by the couch so in case if I cough so hard, maybe that would help me. I take a little while. I don't know which of the twins took it because I didn't see him take it, but they hid it. I guess they figured out your trunks like dad. <laughs> no, it was not an easy life. I, I know. I and another woman imagine. would have either drank with him or left him because that was a long time because that was 39 years that we lived and he drank a lot. Yeah. Uh, he was an alcoholic. Yeah, I I know. I I actually have memories of when he would he picked it would pick me up occasionally from my aunt Pam's house and would take me to go get candy bars in the store. And buy all the candy. Yeah. Bars. A bag, a bag of candy yeah. bar. He wouldn't, he'd only let me buy chocolate though. He would never let me buy like the stuff that you choke on. Well, no, he wouldn't let me buy like the, the fancy sour candies. It was, he, he'd buy me a hundred Snickers bars, but he wouldn't let one, one colorful candy, you know, where you're a kid, the colors is where it's at. But do you know any misunderstandings that we had was over his drinking? At the end, I didn't even, no use arguing, no use hollering, no use begging, because I tried all three, nothing helped. Yeah. And I'm sure that you've seen that because Greg would pick him up, then Greg was a drinker too. And he's not such a drinker now, that's good. No. That's, but when he's out, I hear like to a wedding or whatever, it, he will be himself uh, again, just it, like Bab. That's what we love about my dad. We we don't necessarily encourage it, no. but we know it's going to be a good night. No, that's not a good night for your mother. Well, uh, he's not see, going bananas. No, but you see. My dad, literally, on my mom's side, yeah. all of us cousins... <coughs> Literally talk all the time about the great stories we have when my dad lets loose a little bit. Yeah, but that's not good. My dad's like a, a, a wild a wild tiger. Like, you got to watch him when the cage is out. Yeah. Yeah. But everybody's going to enjoy it. was like that, too. You know, and he talked to everybody. I mean, the nice thing about being with Bab was... I was always more reserved. I was not a wild person. Like I said, I'm very private. Always was. Never, I will never change. And so he would be like my crutch because he always could talk and whatever. So it made me safe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, like you complimented each other. Even, that I, 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 I've said this to my dad a lot and my mom. I yeah. think that's why grandpa drunk, people who are in combat, especially people who are bayonets and shovels, yeah. will have combat fatigue after. Yeah, and he was not a healthy man when he came back. <laughs> he took shrapnel in the neck. And he was the only one out of the And state. he had to kill people yeah. from me to you with yeah. shovels and bayonets. Yeah. So that's not something that goes away after no. a couple of years. It comes back when you're not even prepared for it. Yeah. So even though I, it sucks that Grandpa had a drinking problem, but like it's not because of his own choosing. You know, like sometimes you have to repress those memories. It, I, I've never killed nobody, so I can't tell you what it's yeah. like to live with. After yeah, the fact that, of that, me that, having to hit somebody with a shovel. Oh, Jesus, that could have, must have been so terrible. And then just for that, then to catch shrapnel in the neck and everybody's dead. Mm -hmm. So maybe your prayer stopped that shrapnel from cutting a half an inch deeper. Yeah, it, yeah. I, 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 and he got an honorable discharge. Yeah, no, it was hard. And I, I really, truly... As I'm your God above, I truly believe the Blessed Mother is the one that brought him back. I thank her every day for the, that she brought him back. I, I do, praying. You're a good lady, Grandma. Just, that's why I said this is kind of like 
this kind of is tribulations. The heartbreak, but love at the same time. There's always the, 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 the smiles and cries. It's always, you know, and one I'm day trying. you're up and the next day it's down. It's, it, that's how it is. for In Americans, we got it easy. Yeah. We never, no American really knows what it's like to be hungry. You might be, yeah. you might want to get a bite to eat, yeah. but you, it's not like you haven't ate for six days. Yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. what 90% of the world doesn't eat. There's a child about to die right now because he hasn't ate a drink in Africa or India or you know, we've never had tanks roll down our streets. Yeah. There's never been house to house combat. We've we've lived a sheltered existence, and you know, yeah, you we have been. Yeah, this is a good country. And it was almost destroyed, and now Trump brought us back. Now it's headed back, but you know they're always hey ready to get rid of it. The demons can keep throwing stones all they want. He who ha who believes in God will be on the right teams. You think? Absolutely. Because he is a believer. And Why? I, I see. I made one mistake. I have to tell you about it. <laughs> you know, when when the crooked Hillary was running, she took so much money from the government. I don't want to have you be late. I got to leave in a couple, three minutes. I got to leave. And so you know. And and I heard that he, you know, President Trump, uh, you know, he would take money from other people, you know, like five and ten dollars, so whatever, you know, for donations. So I wish I wouldn't have, but I figured, well, I'm going to send him ten dollars, and I wish I wouldn't have. Now they got my freaking name and phone number and address, and all this calling and all this paperwork <laughs> from everybody. Well, yeah. And every time asking in it. From twenty five dollars and up, you know, contribution. Well, you know, nobody in a right mind could afford that unless if they're millionaires. Yeah. You know, and I wish I didn't have all this freaking paperwork coming to you. I don't even want throw to throw it in the garbage. Box. Throw it in the garbage. Don't if you think it's gonna be. If you see it's something garbage, throw it in the garbage. It's not garbage. You, it's you're really not obligated to fill that stuff out. Yeah, yeah, but but I do have a heart. It bothers me because. Yeah. I don't want him to lose. Your twenty-five dollar donation isn't going to be the make or break. No. Of him being voted back in. His his appointment to presidency of the United States was a divine order. It's ordained by God. You know, four years before he even ran, I told Don, I said, you know, everything is so bad in this world anymore. Nothing is done good. In, you know, in Washington, I says, you know, I would like Donald Trump to run because he's a very intelligent man and he's got, you know, he's got a head on his shoulder. That's what you need for good yeah. business. And I was so surprised when the next time... You're a prophet, Grandma. Huh? You're a prophet. No. You called, you called it before it happened. Maybe that was some divine wisdom. Well, could be, but I tell you, Really, that's why I said I could have been a billionaire. I had so many. It was so hot in church when we were young after we were married. And I says to Bab, I'm going to invent a little fan that we can take with us. And But we didn't have the kind of money. And furthermore, I didn't have enough common sense to do it. But I had so many different inventions that are out now that I could have been. Yeah. But maybe it wouldn't have been good. Maybe there was a reason why I didn't do it. No, maybe you could have did it and then sold that patent to somebody else who made it better. That's Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Mm. There, you know, even hot plates for the table and everything, this was all in this mind. If you don't believe me, you can ask the kids. But who knows? Maybe if you would have became a billionaire, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have been such a good person afterwards. No, that would never change me. You, well, you can. It's easy to say that, Grandma, but money changes everything. No, everything. I would have been so more happy. money, more problems. No, if if say that I developed, if I got a lot of money now, you know what I would do with that money? I would help each of my children and grandchildren. I really, it would not change me. 
you're talking about billions of dollars, Grandma. It's that could definitely not change Yeah, you'd you'd have people every single day, five hundred people a day asking you for money. <clears throat> Eventually it would have made you a colder person. <laughs> no. You seen what I did with the phone call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was cold blooded, Grandma. Oh, you know, one you... time I picked it 